Hello everyone and welcome back to another MCR 3U1 video and this will be the last theory video for chapter 5 and we will cover section uh, 5.8 on solving 3D problems using trig uh, trigonometry. Uh, here's the chapter outline and you can find extra practice questions on pages 332 to 335. Let's get started. Here's the success criteria for this lesson. Um, we want to be able to use different approaches uh, that we cover in this lesson to solve problems. We want to know the general information to try and find um, using geome geometric facts. Um, and lastly, we want to put all uh, the trigonometric principles and knowledge we have gained so far to solve these 3D problems. Okay, so let's go. Here we can see the different approaches that we can use while solving 3D problems. And these are using trigonometric ratios, using the Pythagorean theorem, using the sine law and using the cosine law. So these are, again, everything we've learned so far, um, very generally uh, up to this point. Um, and this is basically all we use when we're solving these 3D problems, in addition to our general geometric facts that we'll get to in later slides, but the approach we use for specific problems to depends totally on the problem. And sometimes we could be using a combination, a combination of these approaches to solve a particular problem. Here are the general steps to take when we begin our 3D problem. First, we want to always sketch our scenario to give ourselves a visual representation of what's going on. This is one of the most important steps, uh, you always want to sketch out what you're doing or what you're uh, trying to solve and the scenario that you have uh, from the word problem. Secondly, <coughs> we want to determine unknown angles using geometric facts, such as facts about parallel lines, the interior angles in a triangle, like we've done before, where um, we know that all the angles inside a triangle add up to 180, so that helps us find the other angle. Also bearings and etc. There's a bunch more, um, but you get the idea. Uh, and this will give us a lot more information about the question that could help us as we solve it. Moving on to step three. Once we find this info, we add it back to our sketch, right? So we're kind of going back to step one, and we're adding and we're adding um, whatever we find in step three to our sketch, and we make a newly revised sketch. Lastly, for step four. We want to use trigonometry to, to solve the problem. So these steps are kind of just at the beginning, sketching it out, seeing what extra information we can pull out from just the visual representation. And then we find the rest of the uh, information we need using trigonometry. So for right angle triangles, in the question, we want to use our trigonometric ratios. And for all other triangles that are not right angle triangles, we want to use the sine law and the cosine law. Now, before we end this video, um, I just wanted to show you guys a general guide that you can use when you solve 3D problems. And we've kind of already seen this guide as we uh, have learned about these laws, but I just wanted to go over it one more time and you can use this as a general guide. Come back to the slide when you're solving the 3D problems. So. On the left hand side of the table below is the information the question gives you. Then in the middle, you have what you are required to find. And on the right, you have the approach that you should use. So let's go through each of them. When you're given a, let me erase these. When you're given a side side angle triangle, so you're given a triangle and you know side A, side B, and you know an angle, for example, angle A, and you're required to find an angle, so for example, you're required to find angle C, we want to use the sine law to solve this question. Because if we know two sides and we know an angle, this is one of our this is one of our scenarios where we can use our sine law because we know a side opposite to a known angle, and we know another side opposite to an unknown angle B which gives us the ability 
to find B. And once we have found B or A, we can use um, the law about the interior angles in a triangle that add up to 180 to find C. Or if it's asking us to find B, we just use the sine law once and we get it. So if we have a side side angle triangle we want to, and we're looking for an angle, we want to use the sine law. Now, if we are, if we're given an angle side angle triangle or an angle angle side triangle, so if we're given a triangle and we're given an angle A and then we're given a side B and we're also given an angle C or an angle B, as it says right here, um, and it's asking us to solve for a side, let's say we have, um, let's say we have C, and it's asking us to solve for a side, which could be side A, right? For this particular scenario, angle side angle or angle angle side, we want to, again, use the sine law to solve for the, for the side, right? Because again, if we have an angle, a side and an angle, um, we can simply, again, know that all angles in a triangle add up to 180. So if we already have A and C, if we already have two of the angles in a triangle, we can simply find the last angle by saying 180 minus A minus C equals B. And from here, if we have found all the angles and if we have a side, we can simply use this side, which is opposite to a known angle now, and this angle opposite to the unknown side, use our sine law to say that um, sine of A over A equals sine of B over B. And if we rearrange this formula, we get that. Um, well, I'll, I'll reverse it to make it easier. So let's say A over sine of A equals B over sine of B. At this point, we know B, we know uh, lowercase b, we know angle a, all we need is lowercase a. So if we multiply sine a by each side, we isolate for a and we get b sine a over sine b equals a, and we can find our last slide. Okay, so that is our second scenario. Moving on to our third, we have side angle side. So we're given a triangle, we're given side a. We're given angle, let's say C, and we're given side B. And it asks us to find the last side, which is C. We know that at this point, we can use the cosine law because again, let me make this a little more lowercase. Again, we have a side, we have an angle and a side, right? And using the cosine law, we can simply find the last slide, the last side because we know that our formula is if we're finding C, we put at the left side of the equal sign, so C squared equals, and then the other two sides, A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine of angle C, right? The angle opposite to the side left of the equal sign. So at this point, again, we know, we know A, we know B, right? So we know A, we know B, and we know angle C because we're given a side, an angle, and a side. And we can simply find side C, which is opposite to that angle, right? So in this case, we have a side. We have two sides and an angle contained between those two sides. And we know that's that's one of the scenarios where we can use the cosine law. Okay. So let's move on to our last scenario. So for side angle side, we use the cosine law. Now for side side side, right? We're given a triangle. We are simply just given all sides of that triangle, A, B, and C. If we're asked to find, let's just say angle, because we know all other sides, so angle, right? We can use the cosine law again because we know that our equation is A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2AB sine of A. Sorry, not sine, cos of A. Right, we know that this equation has four variables, and the four variables are three of them are uh, the sides of the triangle, and one of them is the angle opposite to the side left hand of the equal, equal sign. So we could switch this around and say A is here, or B, or C, anyone we like, but let's say we're trying to find 
angle A. That's what it asks us in the question. We can simply use this equation, rearrange it to isolate for capital A, which is our angle A. And we have, we know A, we know B, we know C. So we can simply find angle A. It's our only variable in our formula. And that's pretty much it. Again, you can use this guide and come back to it. Um, maybe when you're feeling stuck at a specific uh, 3D problem, so you can see what you can do next. Okay, and that is it for the last theory video of chapter five. And the best way to really learn how to solve 3D question is by actually uh, doing them. And so make sure you get lots of practice from the extra textbook questions.